I have a chapter in my book about the space behind the puck in the offensive zone. And um, that's usually open space. No one ever covers the space behind the puck. They usually cover the space in front of the puck in the direction the puck is moving. So years ago, I can remember <clears throat> being in Maple Leaf Gardens watching the Leafs practice. And I saw Lanny McDonald, Errol Thompson, and Daryl Sittler just fooling around after practice in the corner. They were cycling and moving and just uh, reversing the puck to the space behind, reverse the puck again to the space behind, make a play to the shot. And, and so I thought to myself, that's, that's really interesting because back in the 70s and the 80s, <clears throat> there was so much tackling, hooking and holding allowed, that in the defensive zone, it was really hard to create things because the rules were very lax. The referees didn't call a lot. And so that meant that you had to do one thing. You had to find a way to keep moving. A moving target is way harder to check than a stationary target. So the idea of using that space behind the puck as an automatic play when you're under pressure. Obviously, when you've got the puck, you're retrieving a puck in the corner offensively. Check your shoulder. What? The same as a defenseman going back on a breakout. Check your shoulder. Where's the first checker coming from? That's really, really important to always know what your first play is before you get to the puck. Now, the space behind the puck usually means the man turns down the corner or up the corner. The second man or the closest support man slides into that space behind the puck or is ready to if the man reverses the puck. And so that's where cycling came from. And initially, um, cycling was really interesting because it was a three-man activity. And in the 70s, it was almost exclusively forwards. Then, as when the NHL changed the rules in about 1999-2000, uh, they brought in two referees. They brought in zero tolerance. And they also moved the blue lines back four feet. So suddenly the offensive zone was bigger. So initially we had three forwards still cycling. The defense once in a while would participate. But then we kind of realized with the referees calling the game the way they were, you didn't often need two forwards to support. So cycling became a two forward activity. And then one defenseman would activate and maybe the other one as well. But it became more of a, of a two-man activity than it was at one time, three forwards in the cycle. Now, when the rules changed like that, what happened is everybody decided to anchor one forward in front of the net to occupy that defenseman, always give you a, a traffic on any low to high plays that led to point shots. It also gave you a player who could slide down to the back of the net. And if the puck carrier who was cycling couldn't find a play, he could reverse the puck to the space behind the puck to the back of the net, and that man who anchored the front could get to it. So it, it was very effective, and it still is. And, of course, now we activate the D so much more. And I think that's been really interesting uh, in the game is the fact that the defensemen are really expected now. Offensive zone play, it's like forechecking. It's a five-man activity. And as you can see, the whole game is getting that way. Attack through the neutral zone is a five-man activity. The game is played by five players. So almost every activity, you should look to try to utilize five players in the attack. Um, one of the things that's really important in cycling is um, for the man with the puck who retrieves the puck, as I said, check your shoulder and don't let them stop the puck by getting close to you, getting a pin, because once the puck stops moving, usually offensive zone play soon ends. So you want to be strong on the puck, protect the puck, keep your feet moving, check your shoulder, and retrieve that puck, and be thinking about exploding left or right, but try to keep moving. Don't let the opposition stop the puck. If they stop the puck, what happens is they soon shrink the zone, uh, compress the area, and then you've got nothing. 
So on cycling, it's really important. You cycle low and you always look to make plays inside to the slot or to the net front or low to high to the point, but don't force it. Try to make constructive plays. <clears throat> and when in doubt, usually you make a play to that low man who's anchoring in front, you bump it down and he slides to the back of the net. Um, it's, it's effective play. If the puck is turned over there, the other team is 200 feet away from your net, and you've got usually five players on the defensive side of the puck. So cycling is a really interesting activity, um, and it's interesting in the game now that the defensemen are expected to attack as much as the forwards attack. So the next innovation was bringing the D in. You know, the high roller, the high cycle play, the forward cycling up, the D cycles down, or the D pops slip and slide, he pops inside for a quick little play in a little crease. Those kind of plays, um, one D may slide in, the other D slides across the point. So now you get really good five-man activity, and it makes D zone coverage much more difficult. There's more decisions to be made, um, and it makes switches harder to, to accomplish. So now you see with the offensive zone play, because you can't hook and hold and tackle, there's much more speed to it. So it's quite an effective tactic, and a lot of goals start off cycling down low. So that's a really important part of offense. Uh, my university team, we started that in the 70s, doing that a lot. And we just found in small ranks it was really effective. It allowed us to play puck control. It allowed us to uh, uh, draw a lot of penalties uh, on the other team. When you protect the puck and you're moving, you know, teams get a little impatient. The cycle's going too long. They're defending too long. Fatigue sets in. A guy hooks or holds or grabs, and suddenly you're on the power play. So really a good uh, activity uh, as to, have a, to be part of your offense is the idea of cycling. And again, in the, those days we called it the space behind the puck, cycling. And I can remember coaching Marcel Dion. And uh, we used to call those areas behind the puck the quiet zones. And Marcel Dion, he said, no, coach, those are not the quiet zones. Those are the hospital zones because you're in the corner with lots of traffic. So um, a little story for you there on cycling.